Okay, so I've, I've had a couple of minutes just to stand back, refer back to my value sketch, look at the scene in front of me, and I'll, I'll say, even though it's been a little less than an hour, or maybe around an hour, the light's already changed. And even though the major patterns haven't changed because the sun's moving, a lot of this is now more in the light than it was earlier. And this dark shadow shape is broken up quite a bit, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna make adjustments based on how the light is because that would be chasing the light. And if I start chasing the light, I'll keep chasing the light. And then one change will lead to something else and I'll have to darken this and then I'll have to lighten this and then I'll have to lighten this and then I'll have to darken something else. And it just becomes this endless cycle that pretty quickly will make a bunch of mud. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna stick with how things were about an hour ago. Again, the, the, the major light and shadow patterns haven't changed all that much. So I'm just gonna keep that earlier image in my head and I took a, a photo of it as well. Um, so that I can remember it. So let's go back in and put a little more definition to some of these shapes. Again, I'm going to keep sort of that middle value shape a little bit darker. And I'll work on the edges between the light and the shadow. I do like what's going on with this foreground shadow. I gotta keep my head out of the way, sorry about that. I'm not used to painting with a camera over my shoulder. I like a little bit of the green coming through. And honestly, there are enough fallen leaves on the ground. I'm even gonna take some of this umber from earlier and just drag a little bit of that through. Again, just to give the indication of some of these fallen leaves that have started to pile up a little bit down there. Again, it's all the same value, so it's not standing out, but I just want a, a bit of variation in the color and the temperature. That umber's a little bit warmer, so it's a nice little bit of contrast. I'm gonna come back in Wrong one. Let's kind of fill this area in a little bit more. Again, still using a really light touch. Letting some of the underpainting still show through. And I'll just maybe barely drag my finger just to kind of soften up, just barely touch and soften up the edges of those shadow shapes. So that when you squint just a little bit, <clears throat> you can't really see the difference. Since there is some light coming through up here, let me go ahead and just Maybe indicate where a little bit of light's coming through. Just break up that darker shape a little bit. It's maybe even too much. And go back over it a little bit with this blue. Again, just an impression. And so you see that there's our, our shadow light, shadow light pattern is still there but there's some variation in the difference. That's almost too different than this. I'm gonna lighten up this one just a little bit more, at least at the top. So we've got some variation. But again, I don't wanna to spend too much time there because that's not really what, the, what this painting's about. That's not the story. Maybe a few more details to go a little bit later, but that's about it. I'm gonna come through back here and just lighten up some space between these indications of tree trunks. Just sort of the negative space, let that work for me. In fact, we might even take the same 
light green we had earlier just to indicate that there's stuff going on in the light behind those trees. I'm just going to barely tap it just to settle it down a little bit. I'm probably not going to do a lot more with that very back bit of trees. I don't need to. The thing though is that I've lost this tree that's behind our main tree. So I'm going to take this violet and try to get some of that back. And then let's come back with that umber shape, um, um, umber shade. Normally, try not to put dark on top of light but I've got a light enough touch that I'm not filling the tooth. It's not really getting muddy. I don't know. Let's see how that's going to work for us. We'll make it work one way or the other, right? <clears throat> it's one of the fun things about plain air. One of the challenges is that you figure it out as you go, make it work. And if it doesn't, usually there's not a camera over your shoulder, so nobody knows. Today, that's a little bit of a different story, right? But that's okay. Okay, let's come back up here. I'm gonna work a little more in the shadow area just for a little bit. Take some of this warmer violet. I'm just gonna drag it through a little bit just so that's not the only place that color is. And I, I'm, I'm thinking about my half stick of pastel, which is about, you know, three quarters of an inch wide. I'm on the side of the stick and it, it's, it's what I would do with a brush, right? I'm just sort of using that so the mark is in place of the brush. Take a little bit of that shadow up a little further. Okay. Let's, uh, let's put in some sky holes <clears throat> because there's a little bit of the sky coming through up here. And I always, actually this is one of my favorite parts of painting trees because I like, you know, you, I, I generally try to have just that big mass of the shape. And then when I put the sky holes in, it like it, it, it's like it, I think of it as like bringing, giving it some air right? That tree needs to breathe. And if I just have this massive shape and no sky hole, it, I just feel like the tree can't breathe. And it's amazing sometimes how just the little bit of that air coming through, that little bit of the sky peeking through, just changes the whole dynamic of the tree. So I'm going to come in and I've got kind of a mid-value blue. It's not super light. I could actually probably go just a little bit darker. Yeah. And and I don't need a I don't need a lot of sky showing through, right? This tree is still got a lot of its leaves. And most of these sky holes occur near the trunks. So you can use a little bit of that to sort of indicate where your trunks are. Make sure that you have some variation in your size and the shape of these sky holes. And then suddenly you just have a little bit of light peeking through. I'm not gonna put many over here on this far left side or far right side. This tree line back here is, is it runs about here. Right, so we can we can bring the sky holes down a little bit. And that kind of helps tell the story of how tall this distant tree line is. May almost be too many. Might have overdone it just a bit, but I can I can cover some back up if I need to. Let's put it down and walk away for a second. 
It's good enough for now. I do like some of the light that's showing up back here. So I might take my pastel on this. This is a, um, this is actually a great American. It's really soft. I'm just gonna touch it down a few places just to indicate, just sort of touch it and drag it just slightly, just to indicate where some of these trees might be getting a little bit of light. Again, I'm, I'm not gonna draw tree trunks. I'm not gonna really overly define where all those tree trunks and limbs are because that's way too much detail. And it's gonna distract from, from really what's the story, which is how these leaves are turning colors. I might even get bold and have a little bit of this brighter color here and there, just as a little extra golden accent on top of some of what I just put down. Let's see how that works. Yeah, just just to kind of bring them out, just to, to, to let your eye feel like it's noticing something back there without having to completely define it. Let's see if I go too far. I've overdone it, so I better stop. I'm kind of happy with that. And it also gives you the sense of some dappled light, right? The light's trying to find its way through all these leaves. It's interrupted. See, I probably shouldn't do this either, but I just feel like doing it. Maybe a little more warm light on that trunk, <clears throat> just to really emphasize. Okay, I better stop. I don't want to get over, get ahead of myself. Um, there are a few darker trunks, and I, if you noticed in the picture earlier, there is a little sculpture of a deer. Actually, it's a mother deer and a, and is it two? Yeah, it is two fonts, yeah. Um, but I'm not going to paint that because it doesn't, um, it'd be too distracting. It's not what I want to, it's not what I want to paint. So I'm just going to pretend that's not there. I'm going to go in though and just indicate back here some of these darker tree trunks that are showing up in this back, you know, the tree that's behind. Just to give that little sense of shape. And I might even just darken up this line a little bit. It's a little overgrown. Soften it up a bit. Okay. Let's take one more quick little break and then come back and throw in a few details and bring it to completion.